This is number 21 is supply and demand. Now, one of the most fundamental things of property that I've learned in my 15 years of international investment is supply and demand. An example of this is when I go to Dubai and I've been going to Dubai for a number of years. It just didn't make sense to me. You know, when I ran along Jamiroquai Beach, I counted over 27 40-story buildings that were all coming online at exactly the same time. And that was back in 2007. I said, I just don't understand this market. I don't see where the demand is coming from. I don't see where the tenants are going to come from. And you know, wherever I look as an investment, it comes back to supply and demand and the fundamentals of supply and demand. When I was in America last year, there's over a million homes that are oversupplied. You drive around America, there's entire apartment blocks that are that are completed with no tenants and there's houses that have been built in and that's the you know the underlying problem along with financing as to what's happened in america when you take ireland according to the bbc one in five homes in ireland is actually sitting empty when you go to spain there's over four hundred thousand properties that are sitting empty that are major major problems of supply and demand and at the end of the day i purposely chose this this particular angle over here because our partners Oz Invest, and you can see them you know, this is their office block here behind me. They spend millions of dollars every year on research because everywhere that you invest, whether it's in commercial or in residential, you've got to do those supply and demand. You've got to know what's happening in the area. You've got to know what the 10 and 20 year supply demographics are. And then you've also got to know what the, what the demand demographics are so that you can work out where the best areas are. There are magazines in this country and there are research reports that can tell you each and every suburb what is happening on a supply and demand front. So you can look at the macroeconomics of the entire country where, the, where there's far more demand than there is supply and it's out of kilter. And that is one of the underlying, underpinning fundamentals of the Australian property market. In the commercial space at the moment, there's too much supply. And that's, as an example, like I told you in Melbourne, that's one of the reasons that vacancy rates are high and the rental yields are low. But on the residential side, in most of the capital cities, the vacancy rates are less than 2%. In places like Brisbane and Sydney, it's less than 1% at the moment. But at the end of the day, you need the right type of partners, big companies like this, a lot of research staff, a lot of people that are understanding the market so that they can give you the facts and figures with regards to the supply and demand. Because if you are getting the facts in terms of the supply and demand, when you come out here and you get a sense for what is actually happening, that is when you can make educated and informed decisions. And I personally know in London, right through the global financial crisis, I found that the fundamentals of supply and demand, yes, the property market reduced by 15%, but it recovered by 17% in less than 12 months. And the reason being is that the supply and demand was in kilter. There was more demand than there was supply. The stock got sapped up during the global financial crisis, and then the demand really started kicking and prices started to rise. So whether you're looking for capital growth or rental returns, supply and demand is your number one thing that you need to know. And particularly when you're looking at offshore investment, you need to know where that demand is coming from. Because I think one of the most important things is that that demand is local. You need to know what segment of the market it's coming in. So for example, as in Australia, I've already explained to you, if you go off to middle income Australia, that is 85% of the population. That's a significant amount of the demand and it really gives you a good indication of what's happening in the property. You don't want to be like Bulgaria years ago, two, three, four years ago, where 70% of the property that was being bought was being bought by the British and Irish who are foreigners. Now that's not significant demand because the moment the world economics turn, they want to leave the market and you're left with properties that you can't sell and properties that you can't rent. You've got to go after the average man in the street. Australia is a great example, but it doesn't matter whether it's Australia, England, Australia, or, or, the, or America. It's the supply and demand, which is one of the most important lessons. So lesson 21, you need to know those supply and demand numbers so that you can make educated and informed decisions and you don't make mistakes like all those investors who invested in Ireland or Dubai or America or anywhere else where there's been a massive oversupply of property and not enough demand from the general population wanting to either live in those properties or from a commercial perspective wanting to work in those properties shopping center perspective even wanting to shop in those but i think you get the point lesson 21 supply and demand